Hello everyone, this is Mary Gregory with MAS Coding Solutions. We are actually going on a cruise. We are cruising through the CPT book. I believe this is number eight. Uh, we are just cruising through, just throwing out hints and suggestions that will help you to pass that CPC test. But you know more than that, it will help you to become a great coder. You know, I think it's um, too much now where we're teaching people how to pass a test. And we're really not teaching you how to code. And see, when you get that first job, they want to know, do you know the basics? Do you have an understanding of the basics? And so that's what I'm all about, trying to help you not just to pass that CPC. Um, some of this can also help with the CCS. Um, that's a little bit different test. Someday we'll talk about the difference. Um, but um, yeah, we. I want my goal is to help you to become a great coder, cause we need you, we really do. But anyway, we are going to number eight, and number eight, we're going to be talking in the CPT book about uh, the eye, your eyes, and your ears. They're very short chapters uh, in the book, so uh, you're gonna get some eye procedures to code. Okay, uh, they kind of love eye procedures. So remember, uh, once again, we go from top to bottom, from in to out. Uh, one of the things you can do is removal of an eyeball. They call that evisceration. Simply, middle, simply mean that they had to remove somebody's eye. Uh, what causes people to have an eye removal? A lot of times it could be cancers in the eye. Uh, recently I was doing an audit and um, I did a patient that had melanoma in the eye. Um, so, you know, the eye, th this particular patient, before they remove the eye, they are actually injecting that patient with uh, a, uh, a radiation um, injection, um, the little patch of radiation that they put in the eye to try to kill the cancer rather than just taking the eye out. But your eyes can be removed. Sometimes an eye can be removed due to trauma. Uh, people may get hit in the eye and it causes them to, uh, the eye can bleed. Um, and they have to remove the eye. That's your evisceration. You can also have an implant put in the eye. Some people have a false eye put in. Some people may have a false eye and still a patch on. Uh, but you can do your implants as well. So pay attention to those uh, sections as well because your implant can be done at the same time that the eye is removed and then sometimes the eye can be removed first and then later on they have the implant. And they actually have a code for secondary insertion of the implant. So you want to pay attention to that. Uh, some types of lacerations, I think they may call them wounds. Uh, lacerations that people, once again, most of the time that come from trauma. Uh, if you have a, a demented patient, uh, sometimes we have um, patients that are mentally challenged and, and they do things to hurt themselves. And so that could include the eye as well. You also will have question about like, what particular area is this part of the eye located? And you're like, oh, and they said a cornea. You're like, oh my God, I don't know where the cornea is. Don't panic. Just find your cornea procedure. If you go to an uh, anterior segment, the anterior segment includes the corneas, the iris, the ciliary body. So you don't have to, to panic. You can just go and look at the anterior segment and it'll tell you all the different procedures that's done and what part of the eye is done on. So you don't have to panic. You're also going to have chiroplasty. Pay attention to the uh, chiroplasty, of course, is when, now, in the real world, we call it a cornea transplant. Uh, keratoplasty, cornea transplant, same thing. Um, and it tells you that in here, the cornea transplant includes use of fresh or preserved grafts. It also includes the preparation of the donor site, so you won't have any additional codes. Sometimes we'll look at a note and it's so long we think we need three codes. No, you don't need three codes. You may just need one. Because always remember, everything the doctor does is a legal document and they have to do certain things or do certain things in case that record ever go to court. They can say they did it, but it doesn't necessarily mean... Um, that we get decoded. They do have an add-on code for back bench or cornea endothelia allograph. So if I wanted to use that add-on code, I must have in my documentation some type of word about any of the endothelia allograph. 
Other than that, you don't have, you can't code the back bench preparation for a keratoplasty. Watch out for that. Now, the other thing that, um, and there's a lot of good codes. They vary. Uh, the anterior sclera, they like to give you a code about uh, trachelectomy, which is having to do with glaucoma. Uh, that's 66130 category. You're going to want to look at that. Uh, cataracts. Man, cataract is so easy to code. I just loved it that day when I did my test and they gave me a cataract. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's too easy. Also remember, I didn't talk a lot about it in chapter uh, in number seven, but always remember the proper use of your modifiers. Uh, in this area, of course, we got two eyes, we got two ears, so you're going to use left or right, bilateral. Remember the guideline that says if that code says unilateral or bilateral, you cannot add modifier 50, nor can you add right or left. So kind of remember that. Now, getting back to this cataract thing. Now, above the cataract, it tells you uh, under removal, you go to lens 66820, it got incision, it got removal. It tells you everything that's included in that cataract. Therefore, if they give you an iridectomy code in addition to this cataract code, wrong answer. Iridectomy is included in it. So be careful with that. Uh, you also, if they uh, put in an implant at the same time that they remove the cataract, it's one code. There are times when a patient would come back in and have a secondary implant, and you have codes for that. So just kind of watch out for that. Your category six seven zero zero five. Your vitreous. Oh man, you're gonna get you're gonna get some uh, a vitrectomy, a vitrectomy to code. Um, it's gonna be uh, with photocoagulation or without photocoagulation. You want to pay attention to those types of work and repair this retina. Huge, huge. And one of the ones you got to be very aware of is the one that says diabetic. So it's a very specific diabetic code, uh, CPT code. So, of course, if I want to use that code, my patient must have a diabetic retinopathy. If I don't have a diabetic retinopathy, then I probably could not, I will not be using that code. So kind of just pay attention to those types of things. You're going to get your, stra your strabismia uh, coding, your extra, uh, extra ocular muscle, 67311. I went through in my book and I wrote down the ones that are considered to be horizontal muscle, the medial and lateral is the horizontal muscle. Your, uh, um, your vertical muscles is your superior rectus, your inferior rectus, uh, superior oblique and inferior oblique. So know those uh, techniques and notice with strabismus surgery you have a lot of add-on codes. And so if you want to add some of those add-on codes, make sure that documentation is stated in your scenario. Also pay attention. If they tell you the patient has some type of cataract procedure or strabismus procedure two years ago, three years ago, and now they're having this procedure on that eye, you might have 67331 as an add-on code because it's saying that this patient have had a previous eye surgery. Alrighty, and the other thing that I felt was challenging for me and still is challenging is your category six um six seven seven zero zero that is dealing with um your eyelid repair. Some of those blepharophy as they call them, some of that is code if it's the skin of the eyelids only, then you're gonna be back in category one one three ten, one one four zero, uh one one six, uh one seven zero zero. If you're working with the muscle of the eyelids, then you are in the 67770 um, six, category, 679, those types of things. All right, let's move on to the ear. You're going to love it if they give you a tympanostomy to code or uh, maringotomy, you know, tubes in the ear. Um, you, you just have to know, was it under general anesthesia? Was it not under general anesthesia? And also remember... Whoever put the tubes in, they will get paid. They will not get a separate payment for taking the tube out. Once they get paid for putting the tubes in, that is also paid for taking it out. And of course, we know a lot of times those tubes can just fall out on their own. They do have a separate code if those tubes are removed by someone different, a different surgeon. Okay. And then the other thing that they like to uh, give you a uh, coding on 
is this Kalia implant uh, that they do for hearing loss, uh, deafness. Um, so pay attention to that because it has a couple of different uh, things that go along with that. Like um, I think it's something about a plate or something like that. So you don't want to look at that. I don't do a lot of ear coding anymore. I used to when I worked at another facility. Uh, if you look at 69930, I don't like, uh, sometimes I try to clear things up. That's a Kalia device implantation with or without a mastoidectomy. So you want to pay attention to uh, that type of thing. So they gave you the code for the mastoidectomy in addition to the 69930, you'll know that's the wrong answer. You'll need a left or right put on that. Um, so that would end number eight uh for us i just i'm kind of just looking back over the other that tim plant ostomy uh tim panoplasty as well notice you got some ad if you look at 69631 they kind of sometimes tend to like to give you that uh pay attention to that is with the ossicular change or without that chain so you want to pay attention to all those little small words um and that's what really messes up a lot of time on taking these tests. We don't pay attention to the small words. Or we misuse modifiers. Um, so just remember. And another one, just before, uh, before we close today. I want you to really study up on 69209, 69210. Now. That's just removal of saroon, earwax. But people have a hard time coding that. And so they may tend to give you one of those. So make sure you understand like the 69209 can only be used if that physician documented that it was impacted. See, your uh, 69210 is also removal of impact saroon requiring instrumentation. And that 69209 is if it's um, uh, irrigation and lavage. Because if that saroon is not impacted, you do not use these coats. Because you can remove some saroon and it's not be impacted. So the key to using those two, one of those two coats is that word impacted. Because it says for saroon removal that is not impacted, see an E&M code. That's key. So... If they gave you one of these decodes, you got to see if it was impacted, number one. And then you would decide whether it was a, a 9 or a 10 based on 9. Did they just irrigate it and lavage it? Uh, instrumentation, they may say they used the alligator clips. You know, I used to think, alligator clips, alligator clips. What does that look like? Well, they just big uh, tweezers. That's all they are. They're just big tweezers. Um... So don't get thrown off by words. Sometimes when physician uh, in healthcare we use these fancy words and we think it's something really great and awesome and you go in and you're working in the ER. Uh, some In my old days, I miss being in the hospital. You, you got to see a lot when you was in the hospital. Working from home is nice, but I think it sometimes it's such a big disconnect. So when I would go down to the <laughs> down to the ER to take trust to the ER or just walking through the ER, you know, you see these big uh, tweezers on, on the tray. Well, those were the those were the alligator clips. So I kind of miss that. Um, Sometimes, like I said, we read these big words and we think it's something humongous, and it's not. A lot of times, it's just a little small thing. But anyway, that will end our cruising through, we up through, oh gosh, the 60,000 codes. We'll do the 70,000, which is uh, x-ray radiology, and then we'll do the 90,000. I will not do that much on the uh, laboratory section. I'm just not a great laboratory coder. I don't code lab. But we'll just talk a little bit about your uh, panels because you will have questions on there about the panel. Uh, you're going to have a question on there about drug essays and things like that. Not a whole lot, but enough to make sure you understand where to go look for stuff at. Well, this is Mary, and I'm going to get ready to sign off for today. 
It's been wonderful being with you today. Uh, I encourage you to follow us on, of course, our YouTube. Uh, we're LinkedIn and Facebook. Uh, Twit. Uh, I think we do Twitter, too. I haven't tweeted a lot lately. Um, I keep thinking I'd like to get back into tweeting or get uh, comfortable with tweeting. Let me put it like that. I would encourage you all to make sure you do your, your homework, study. And then the day before you take the test, probably just relax. Because if you haven't got it by then, you're probably not going to get it. Uh, just make sure you're ready to take your test. Don't take your test if you're getting married the next week. Or uh, maybe like my mom passed away back in June. I wouldn't dare take a test in June uh, because of that. So, you know, your emotional state is very important in taking these tests. So make sure you're ready for this test emotionally. Uh, if you've been through a hurricane or some of the natural disasters that we have had recently, get all that straightened out first uh, so that emotionally you'll be ready for the test. Well, that's my advice for the day, and I'm sticking with it. I look forward to talking to you real soon. Don't forget to follow me once again on Facebook, LinkedIn, and our website, www.mascodingsolution.com, and um, we'll be talking to you in the future to finish this up.